Hello everybody, welcome to the Masterpiece Show, which will be about comics, books, video games or movies that you must have seen, read or played to be a true collector. Today we are going to talk about Plunge, made by Joe Hill, Stuart Immonen and Dave Stewart. In the aftermath of the tsunami of the Bering Strait, the distress signal from Delers, a scientific exploration boat which has been missing for 40 years, is detected. Marine biologist Moria Lem joins the MacReady team, commissioned by Rococo International, a private group very interested in the Delers cargo. So they go looking for them. Drawings are incredible. You are going to tell me that for an horror comic book, what will play the most is the atmosphere. And oh my god, it's excellent. The world story will take place on an island and this feeling of confinement will be constant. We will never really get out of this story. We are drowned. And what is strong is the weather. In the beginning, the weather is nice. It's only the beginning after all. Nothing special to report. Then the closer you get to the island, the more the weather gets cloudy. The waves are agitated, then the night fall. And to live from this moment, the weather will no longer be coherent. Dark but clear at the same time, the rain, the snow, then a bizarre green which reminds the seabed, and finally a blood red sunset. Moreover, the date, the place and the time, which are at the beginning very often written, so that we can locate, but when we are on the island, it disappears. Translation time and place are lost. Finally, the fact that the names of the creators are getting more and more numbers until they no longer recognize their name at the end. Scientific equation to say that even science in a way is present but not accessible, because for the common people it's not understandable. Yes, you have understood everything is there to lose us as readers and do not even count on the writers to get us out, because they are no longer here. This story is incredibly rich and it's extremely realistic. Already in the first chapter, which may seem bad because it's a lot of very long dialogue, but at least it has the merits of showing that we are in a real story, because everything relates to reality. Like ecological problems, businesses that affect everyone and which may sometimes take seas to put chemical thing in it, which will also refer to the creatures that we will meet later. But all of these dialogues make it possible to identify the characters characters easily and above all to understand that they are the main characters and suddenly the bonds that we have with them begin to be forged. Then when the crew arrives on the island they discover the dead man who is a part of the old crew. They set off on search for clues to find the remains members. After hints all over the island like mass and explicit totems the crew are unharmed and we realize they just want help getting into a submarine. But the turnaround, the people from the old crew are not human, they are worms, a bit like Princess Mononoke. But these come from elsewhere, they come from another world, where there is a trapdoor underwater. And they took people as natural habitats since the door is closed, because they can no longer go home. So they ask the crew to open this door and in exchange they let them alive, with all the gifts that they have given them like the resolution of Pi, but especially the energy that allows electricity for 1000 years for a whole country, which is not negligible. I would like to remind you that at the beginning we were talking about pollution. But all of this was done with sacrifice. Many members died because of an ingot that should not be looked. Otherwise it ends up into a fight to the death, and others because they refused. Besides there is a remedy to avoid being possessed by this monster, it's just a soup that Clark has done. When the remaining humans get to have some time to examine items, ingot and chemical, they focus on getting revenge for the deaths of the other members. That's why Russ gets to dive into Worm's memories and manages to find a solution while living his life. Besides, why Russ and not another character? Because Russ means Russians, and he is the base placed. The Russians are also present in this story, and they know more. Moreover, when we translate this block of text, we realize that the Russians 
Dan say, What is the real shit that is bumping the frame? Can you have that? I am more concerned about what has happened to our software, Captain. The system of navigation got fried. We are sailing into the blind. Let's go up and after that turn off the system and give my eyes back to me, Lieutenant. This is very well placed. Because as long as you have eyes, you can die. Because you can see the ingot. But above all of this, worms attack your sight to take possession of your body. So that announces... Well done, you have understood perfectly. But not too much time to set something up. The worms arrive, make a lamb a dilemma, and lamb manages to open this door. We could say that all is done, but a gigantic tentacle comes out of this door. Engage grabs Lacan to restore the ingot and the special material precisely to exterminate this creature once for all. He does. Lamb and Bill go towards the sun trying to dodge the dark, but a worm stayed and this one is in Lacom. Beyond being a critic of the pollution that we create, it's also a way of saying that we don't know the consequences of what we can produce and what we do. Lacom is paid so much by Rococo that he wants at all costs to bring back knowledge among men. Surely to success, like in reality, his soul had lost all rationality. And reason is characterized by Gage Carpenter, who wants only one thing, his crew is going back home. The emphasis on mass is not trivial. Our mass cannot allow us to explain what we see. There is no rationality, because everything is inexplicable in our frame of reference. The worms succeeded in setting up an object which allows us to know the thoughts of the people. The explanation is that the souls are in another frequency, whereas in this magnificent book Einstein Enigma, the authors prove that the soul does not exist. There are things all around us that is us. We have only discovered a millionth of what can exist in the universe and our capabilities. I mean, it's already happened to us that sometimes we feel connected to another person. That sometimes the person we see in our dream thinks of us at the same time. And yet, these are still things that we can't prove scientifically. But it does exist. This is why worms attack sight, because it's the other senses that can help us understand the world around us. Moreover, by putting worms as a representation of evil, it's already an idea to say that the earth is against us. Nature is. Man is not the last in the food chain, and even human sacrifice and knowledge, because everything dies with gauge, nature will take over no matter what. This is also why in the final image, the character speaks directly to us. I recall that the place where he is at the end, is the place of the announcement of the chapters. A place that only readers can see. In terms of names, it's the same. Everything is consistent. Rococo is not a reference to a porn actor, even if it talks about coke in these books. It's the Baroque movement, which is created to especially highlight the asymmetry with trompe l'oeil to create surprise and illusion of movement and drama. In fact, Rococo is a company that is interested in everything related to the energy by the elements. Earth, water, wind, and even space. It's represented by Lacom. Moria Lamb, Lamb in English is to say that is not my fault, I'm an innocent as a lamb. By the way, it's funny because the person who will discover something strange and who will be the trigger of all of this, it's her. Bill Q. Make, reference to Tamusi Q. Make, was a leader and advocate of Inuit culture. I recall that it takes place in the Bering Strait, where the Inuits are. The Carpenters, yes, I want to say a reference to John Carpenter, big name in cinema and horrific films, especially Carpenter, Brills and Reaper. That's why in the story they find a way to kill the big tentacle with something built. But take a closer look at their first names, because they are not chosen randomly. Gage, the battle, Russell, called Russ, which means Russian, and Clark, the educate. So no wonder it was him who found the remedy to avoid being possessed by worms. I will not make all the names, but know that some may surprise you. But what I want to prove to you with that name game is that the universe is respected. And what is crazy is that I did not find anything in particular on David Lacombe, who is in a way the enemy of the crew as well, apart from David who everyone knows that means beloved, someone who is loved, but in reality, as a reader, he is not trusted at all. 
This helps support this enigmatic ending. Why doesn't he remove the worm from his finger? Why does he so easily accept being possessed by this worm? If I tell you that David Lacombe is the reader. From the start, Lacombe has been a newcomer to the MacReady crew, someone who makes the safest decision, such as cooperation, would choose success by wanting to bring back knowledge and acts as a traitor to have this ingot. This newcomer is not used to working with them, that's why he has a certain perspective on things. That's also why we hate him. Lacom is what almost all people would do in this situation. So, contamination is simply to say that nature will survive in us in our body. David is sort of dead, he has no way to get home and he no longer has the ingot he wanted so much. Nature will remain alive even after our destruction of it. It will have another form and will take place in our corpses. Yes, it's yucky, but true.